everybody. Uh, welcome to the new Comic Book Day Rundown. It is Wednesday once again, which means it's time for a new episode where we talk about everything that is on sale from Dark Horse this week. Uh, I am Dustin. I'm the PR coordinator for Dark Horse Comics, and today I am joined by... Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Rachel. I am the digital publishing manager. Hello. Very excited to have you back here. I haven't gotten to do an episode with you in the longest time. It has been a minute, yes. yes. I am stoked to be here because we have some pretty awesome releases this Teamwork week. makes the dream work. It does. Let's do this. Cool. Ooh. Ooh. That had some Ow, stain That on did it. have some stain. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we are about to dive into everything that's on sale this week. Um, I know y'all want some of this, so uh, our contest for 2018 is that all you have to do to win all these fantastic items is share this video. Uh, the one caveat to that is you'll want to make sure that you have a public profile, otherwise we can't see your entry. We so can. don't don't block us, man. Don't be a private dancer. <laughs> don't be a, be a public dancer if you could. Um, remember, if you have any questions about any of our comics, uh, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Uh, we will either answer those on today's video or we will answer them next week if you don't catch us while we're live. Mm -hmm. So uh, hurry up and type away. Yep. Um, we do have an awesome digital sale today, so I will let Rachel take it away with yeah, that. Yeah, let me tell you guys about it. We have a digital Dorkin Deals sale going on this week. So it's going to be all things Evan Dorkin, uh, Milk and Cheese, Beasts of Burden, Blackwood, and more. This is a really fun assortment. It has been a very long time since we have done a Dorkin sale, years, <clears throat> literally. So we're really excited yes. to have this just fun, curated collection of stuff for you guys. Uh, it's going to be 50% off on all included titles, so that works out to 50 off of graphic novels and 99 cent single issues. Um, so make sure, get it while it's hot, um, pick it up in the app, on the website, uh, and yeah, just Check it out. And we will drop a link for that uh, below in the comment section yes, once we, we are do. done with our live video. Yes. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm exci so excited for the premiere of Blackwood later this month. That is the new Evan Dorkin series. Mm -hmm. Huge fan of Beasts of Burden. There's a new series of that coming up. Uh, so if you're a fan of Evan Dorkin and his uh, brand of humor, uh, this is a sale you absolutely want to get in on. If yeah. you've never read anything by Evan Dorkin, you absolutely need to. Yeah, it's, it's essential. super easy to jump in, too. Yes. I mean, we're not talking, you know, whole worlds here. You can pick up a Beast of Burden one shot and read that and see if you feel it, you know? Beast of Burden Hellboy. Do you guys yeah. read that? That's yeah. such a yes. good one. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's a good one shot. Good, good crossover. Yeah. Um, also... Free comic book day. Yes. It is this Saturday. It is this what? Saturday. So if anybody doesn't know what free comic book day is, it's basically better than Christmas. Um, so essentially, uh, every May, uh, for one Saturday only, local comic book shops are going to be carrying uh, a free comic book day offering. So it's a comic that you don't have to pay for, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Um, that's, that's why it's called so That's why it's called the, in, case in case you couldn't case. tell. Yeah, if you didn't think um, it. So we, uh, as publishers, we will be offering two offerings. One is going to be an all-ages offering, as you'll see here, which is going to have two short stories in it, which is going to be The Legend of Korra and Nintendo's Arms, uh, as you can see on the back here. Uh, so that's going to be Dark Horse's all-age offering for uh, Free Comic Book Day. Um, and then our general offering is going to be an Overwatch short story from Blizzard, uh, as well as a Black Ooh. Hammer short story from Jeff Lemire and Dean Ormston's expanded superhero universe. So uh, we're very excited to be able to offer you those uh, this weekend. Uh, so that is going to be uh, the 5th. May 5th, mm -hmm. yes, yep. I'm and calculating days forward. Good job, and just a heads up, <laughs> we do offer these same, uh, if you don't make it out to your local comic book shop, we do offer these in digital the following week. They'll be available from Dark Horse Digital. So if you didn't get a chance to pick it up locally, you can still read it. Everybody wins. And if you want to go to your local comic shop but you don't know where yours is or if you have one near you, um, you can go to comicshoplocator.com. Uh, all you have to do is punch in your zip code and it will give you a guide to any local comic shops near you. So yeah. support local businesses. Bet. All right. Are we ready to dive into yeah. what's on sale today? Let's dive into these releases. I'm going to get us started with this baby right here. Dr. Star and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows, number three. From the World of Black Hammer, written by Jeff Lemire, with art by Max Fumara, a variant cover by Dustin Wynn. On the hunt for a cure for his sick son, astral crime fighter Dr. Star heads to the moon 
only to discover an intergalactic federation called the Star Sheriff Squadron looking for a leader to defend the galaxy. So I'm going to show you guys both covers here and we'll take a look at some interior pages as well. Yeah, these are... I am really feeling this. Um, let's take a look at a couple of pages. Well, Max Fumaro is such a good choice for art yeah. for this. This is one of the Black Hammer Universe uh, spin-off series. Um, this takes place during World War II uh, within the Black Hammer timeline. Within that timeline, some things are set in the present, some things are set in the past, in the in the forties during World War II, and Quantum Age will be set in the future. So there's a whole expanded timeline hopping universe going on there. Heck yeah, um, there is. And I'm becoming increasingly obsessed with this series. So if you're not, you need to get on my level. Yeah, you do need to get on Dustin's level, and actually a lot of people's level, frankly, because yes. Black Hammer and the associated Black Hammer world, I think, is really blowing up. It's everything. Yeah, it's everything. Another thing that is everything to me and that I've been waiting literal years for oh my God. Um, is Xerxes. And I'm going to read you the full title here. It's Xerxes, The Fall of the House of Darius and the Rise of Alexander. Uh, this is issue number two. This is obviously by Frank Miller. Um, this is uh, part of the 300 universe, um, focusing on the Persian invasion of Athens. Um, the Athenians must now turn to defend their home city from the invading Persians. The citizen soldiers of Athens have devised a ruse to hold off the invasion, but should their gamble fail, fail it will be slaughter. Uh, so this is written and drawn by the amazing Frank Miller. And legend. 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 Legendary. <laughs> um, and this is just full of gorgeous double page spreads. The other thing that's awesome about the Xerxes series is that this, uh, it, it's all supersized. So these are, I think, most of these range from 30 to 34 pages, whereas normally you're only going to get about 21 or 22 story pages uh, in a series. And this is going to be a five issue uh, awesome Frank Miller series. So we're very excited to have that back. Yeah, the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Excellent. And I love that we're cramming in all those double page spreads. Yes. Go Frank. Okay, so next, guys, I want to tell y'all about Koshay the Deathless, number five. Uh, Koshay attempts to defy Baba Yaga, but it comes at an unbearable cost. Um, this is a new ongoing series from Mike Mignola, wherein he returns to hell and to the folklore that's filled some of his greatest books, reuniting with some classic Mignola collaborators, artist Ben Stenbeck, and colors by Mignola mainstay Dave Stewart. Let's take a look at the inside. Beautiful colors from Dave Stewart, as usual. Really Coche at the bar with Hellboy and Hell. Yeah. All right, let's flip forward a couple. That's quite a drink state. Yeah. Got some just really just it's very dynamic, as I I think all Mignola books are. I mean, they have such a sort of you know, iconic look to them. For sure. Um, you, you always, always know when you're looking at, at a Mignola book. book. Yes, you yeah. do. Um, so definitely mm -hmm. check this out. We're not super far into it yet, so you can still get There's caught up. definitely time to get caught up. And the yeah, Russian folklore that inspires this story in particular is just, is very fascinating. I love that he's kind of been diving into that lately uh, between uh, Koshay and Rasputin um, and even the winter special uh this year kind of delved into some of that as yeah. well. So we're getting a lot of Russian yeah. folklore in the yeah. Hellboy universe yeah. right now. Sure, and yeah. Well, Rasputin is kind of a Mignola-verse main Well, for sure, course, but it's too, a, right? as far as like the way that they're diving into it in some other areas yeah. with Baba Yaga and mm -hmm. Koshe, I'm really living for right now. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, also living for Zodiac Star Force, uh, this is the second series. It's Cries of the Fire Prince. This is issue number four, which is the final issue. Um, so this is going to be a final showdown between the Zodiac Star Forces and the Demon Pavos, the U.S. and the U.K. teams. So there's two Zodiac Star Force teams now. It's very echoing of Sailor Moon mm -hmm. uh, when they added the back half of the Sailor Scouts. Yeah. So this is a really fun kind of homage to yeah. Sailor Moon and other magical girl. Yeah, uh, Jim. Anime, Jim, Jim, totally. Yeah, it's got that really 80s retro throwback feel which I just think is so cool and it's fun because it's kind of self-aware too mm -hmm. like it's not it's not self-aware to the point of being like a full-blown parody of something because it's certainly serious in its own right but it's kind of a loving homage to it a send up and it sort yeah. of subverts a lot of the tropes in that genre as well so yeah. Zodiac Star Force is a very yeah. fun read yeah for example greater diversity than we would have better seen. diversity but, yeah. um not just racial diversity but also body diversity and... um really cool series yeah. highly recommend it 
And Kevin Panetta and Paulina Ganeshow are just an amazing creative team. I love them. Right on. All right. Well, next up, we're going to shift over to the world of books. Um, And we are going to talk about milk and cheese, dairy products gone bad. Speaking of Evan Dorkin. Speaking of Evan Dorkin, uh, this is something that uh, fans have been waiting for for a while. Um, It's just really exciting. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about it. Um, A Carton of Hate. A Wedge of Spite, a comic book of idiotic genius. This is an Eisner Award-winning dairy duo returning in this new trade paperback collecting every single stupid milk and cheese comic ever made from 1989 to 2010. So if you were reading kind of more, um, you know, non-superhero comics in the 90s, you were probably into this. Um, it's, It's become a bit of an icon over the years. And it's by Evan Dorkin, of course, with colors by Sarah Dyer. Um, complete milk and cheese comics uh, and a new, new affordable trade paperback collection. And it's a completely comprehensive book. It's got the covers to all the issues. It's got pinups, even the art for the milk and cheese cra- trading card set that came out in 1995 spread across two pages. You're a super fan if you have those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. And, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they're difficult to track down at this point. Yes, um, for, uh, for, sure, for sure. I would be absolutely <laughs> shocked if anybody could find them. If you can find them and send me a link, you, yeah. I will, you'll be my hero. Um, you have a fun story about oh, milk and cheese. I do. I do. <laughs> um, I was watching an episode of Roseanne because I do own the entire DVD. And this is an it. this is an old an and original episode, not, not from not the, the new one. This is from probably around ninety five, around Pro- the time those trading cards yes. came out. <laughs> and I noticed that David, who Roseanne super fans will remember as Darlene's boyfriend, was wearing a really rad milk and cheese t-shirt during a scene in which him and Darlene were drawing comic books together. So I thought that was a really fun homage. Whoever the costume, so, yeah. <laughs> was like, or whoever, you know, clearly thought it would be awesome to have him wearing that, which it was. And uh, I paused it and took a picture of it. Yes. So. <laughs> so if you're watching Roseanne reruns, keep your eye out for milk and cheese. It was yeah. all the rage and still yeah. is. And he had a really cute cardigan layered over it, of too. Of course Which was did. like a very 90s grunge look mm-hmm. that I was really feeling it. Very David. Very David. So, so David. That's so David. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the last book we have to talk about today is The Occultist. Uh, This is the omnibus of The Occultist series. Um, So this is going to collect The Occultist number one through five and The Occultist volume two at death's door uh, number one through five. So this is written by Dark Horse's president, uh, Mike Richardson, and co-written by Tim Seeley. Uh, It's got art by Victor Dugino and Mike Norton, who you should know from Battle Pug, which is probably one of the purest things that exists. Yeah, it's... it makes me happy in my heart when it, I think about Battle yeah, Pug. Yeah, absolutely. Battle Pug, check it out. Also check out The Occultist. <laughs> Love it a lot. Uh, so this follows a character who's named Rob Bailey. So he stumbles upon a magical book that gives him supernatural powers, and he must learn to balance not only his personal responsibilities, but also the ones that come with him being the new Occultist with a capital O. That's his new job. Uh, whether it's fighting gangs of mages or warding off evil warlocks, Rob must learn how to control his new occult abilities before they overcome him. Uh, So this is an extremely good book. Um, Check out a few of the interiors here. Dustin, just so you know, I'm pretty sure someone just posted a link for you to find for those the, milk and cheese I cards. I knew the internet oh, would come through. Thanks, internet. Thanks, internet. <laughs> we know what Dustin's spending his pay I know. On. <laughs> Can't wait to show y'all those. Uh-huh. Um, yay. We Next did it. Time. We did Oh, we have some, uh, we had a fan question from last week because we were talking about aliens, the new aliens, uh, uh, we had, it was Alien Day last week. Right. Um. So we were talking about who some of our favorite alien versus matchups would be. I think I said Hellboy uh, or uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer would be Ooh. fun. But some of the other top ones that we got were uh, Alien versus Hellboy was a popular one. Okay. But we also got Alien versus The Mask, <laughs> which would be dope. Yes. People also wanted to see Rick and Morty uh, interrupting an AVP fight. Mm. So that's okay. creative. Yeah, that thanks, Internet. That's a very Internet suggestion. Also, <laughs> if you didn't see the Rick and Morty like landing on the alien, Ship with mm. the face. Hu- did you see that video? Uh, no, I don't. I think, think it I was did. a promo for the last season. Oh, nice, funny. Yeah. One of the funniest Rick and Morty bits I've ever seen in my life. Um, oh, and Evan Dorkin, Aliens versus Beasts of Burden. So that'd be cool. That's interesting. The whole team. I have to say, I mean, those. You know, they're a pretty good team, but I, 
I'm nervous about how I'm that nervous about go how for that those, go those gentle animals. Like, it worked out for Jonesy, though, in the yeah, movie, so maybe true. they'll be fine. True, true. This could be fine. Well, that's uh, fun. So yeah, for this week's question to you, since we've got a lot of dorking going on, mm -hmm. uh, talked about milk and cheese, we've got the new series coming up, and we're doing the digital sale, we're super curious to know uh, what is your favorite uh, Evan Dorkin comic and why. So go ahead and comment that below so that we know you watch this video till the very end. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any other questions that you'd like to ask us that we could talk about for you in next video, feel free to comment those as well. And uh, make sure to share this video to win all of these awesome comics. Win it all. Winner take all. All right. We did it. Nice job. Woo! Woo all right. All right, guys. Tune in next week. We will see you then. See you next